Please be seated. This is the night. This is the night where we hear the story. This is the night where we hear our story, the full story from the beginning of creation where God creates everything that there is in love and for love and through love. And God creates the world and we mess it up, right? <laughs> God creates the world and we mess it up, but God doesn't give up on us. And when we go and we sell ourselves for bread and we're in slavery in Egypt, God does not forget us there. And when we are enslaved to Pharaoh outside and the Pharaoh in our hearts, God does not leave us there, but calls us out with a mighty arm out of Egypt and takes us through the water to freedom to the promised land. And we mess it up. <laughs> and we're in the promised land and we mess it up and we persecute the poor and we treat the immigrants badly and we take everything we can and leave nothing left. So much that this beautiful promised land we are lost and kicked out of and exiled and other people are planted in our place. But God still does not forget us even in exile, even far away and remembers us and says, Ezekiel, what do you see? I see this valley of dry bones. And God says, no, I don't see dry dead bones. I see a whole people ready to be reborn and brought back and planted where they're supposed to be. And this is the night of our full story because tonight, all through this history, comes to this moment. This moment when there is a new fire lit. When Jesus is resurrected and comes back and teaches us that the thing that we think we know the most about, <laughs> the thing we know, that we know for sure, that we're going to die and death has the last word, does not have the last word. God proves us wrong. No, I don't think so. <laughs> there is a new fire tonight, a new fire that is God's love for us and strength for us and power for us. And here's the thing. It is not only new fire in Jesus and for Jesus, but Jesus looks at us and says, this new fire of life is for you, is for us. This is the ultimate exodus. This is the ultimate and the fulfillment of the dry bones rattling and coming together. It is God's life in us, in Jesus, in this night, in this new fire. And that's what we did outside. All of that about the fire and the candle and all of that. This is the acknowledgement, the recreation, the memorial, the remembrance of the new fire of Jesus' resurrection that is now burning in the middle of God's creation, this new fire of life and love and God's power. But if we're honest, right, the new fire is also a strange fire. It is a scary fire, or should be if we're paying attention, right? And so we have Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel account, which I love. And so the women are there, and they said, who's going to roll the, the stone away for us? And they show up, and the stone is already rolled away. And they go inside, and there's this strange guy wearing a white robe sitting at the right-hand side of the tomb and saying, you're looking for Jesus, the one who was crucified? He's not here. He's not here. He's gone ahead of you to Galilee, just like he said he would. And they run out terrified. End of gospel. <laughs> they run out terrified, right? They are scared and they run out. Because the new fire is also a strange fire. And they got it. They, thought it, they knew it was real. They knew God was doing something new and wonderful. But what does this all mean? What does this all mean for Jesus? What does it mean for us? What does this mean? 
And I think we can be in that place with the women tonight, too. Because this fire that is in Jesus, that Jesus lit, is lit in our souls also. And here's the thing. It means that while we will die like Jesus died, we will be raised like Jesus was raised. And it means we don't have to worry about death anymore. We don't have to try to extend our lives by any means necessary to the point where we just go on and on and on and sort of get dragged out and thin, right? We don't have to worry about how do we protect ourselves in every single little way? How do we make sure that I look out for number one and protect myself so I can stretch out the longest period of time possible? It's no way to live. <laughs> it's no way to live and through Jesus, thank God, we don't have to live like that. We don't have to live like that because we have the promise of life that doesn't end, but life that is eternal and real. The new fire, tonight is the night. That we can realize that. And I invite us to think about, well, how are those things, how are those ways that we are living that are a little too afraid? What can we do when we don't have to be afraid? What are those things that we are afraid of that we can lay down here as we kneel before the altar tonight? If we had nothing to lose, which friends we don't, what can we do with our lives to show God's love and mercy and peace to all of those around us? Tonight is the night, and that fire is kindled on the new fire in Jesus, in our Paschal candle, but most importantly, in us. It is burning in us, and God has set it alight tonight, and it is blazing. And tonight is the night. Amen. Amen.